Hello, 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 hello. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Hi, my name is Amaka, as you know. <laughs> my name is Amaka from Mind of Marcos, and I'm back. I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Excited to be back. I haven't done a video in a really long time. I think I've been concentrating on the blog and putting information out there that is easily. Um, it's easily accessible and maybe easier for me to manage too with my current responsibilities. Uh, making a YouTube video requires a bit more <laughs> than doing uh, maintaining the blog. So I'm glad that I'm able to do a video now. Um, taking some time off to be able to that, kind of manage this and get it going. So let's get on it. <laughs> um, March, March, March on the blog. Blog is Mind of Marcos. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, please, I beg you, subscribe, subscribe because you know it costs money to do this. It does cost money. Somebody is editing it for me. I don't have the time to edit it. And um, it's just good for information that is solid to be out there, to be shared, um, to be supported. And I think that what I am doing is quite useful providing value to you, giving you information, giving you the opportunity to ask you professional questions. Mental health is not something that we often get to talk about and when we do talk about it, there's always somebody who is in a competition about who has the poorer mental health or how people are just badly behaved. Um, in public places when we try to talk about these things, it's not very easy to get to the bottom of it. So I think providing this space, giving you the opportunity to contact me through my DM, through email, whatever, whatever, it is quite valuable and I hope that you are finding it so. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe. If, you have, if you've never shared anything, please share. Um, if, you, if you've never asked a question that is bothering you about your mental health or the mental health of people that you love, put it in the comments, send us an email. I'm happy to answer questions. I'm much better with, you know, kind of um, replying to emails and um, text than actually um just talking <laughs> i actually just talking and you know my goal when i started this was to just make my knowledge more easily accessible because i would not get to see everyone but the people who i don't get to see that do benefit from this information so because of how wide the social media um goes so that's enough about subscribing yeah subscribe <laughs> subscribe tell your friends to subscribe and um in the month of march 2024 when we're brainstorming about what will be most useful now we thought march men let's talk about men's mental health um let's dedicate the whole month to that and we're coming up to kind of like the middle of the month now and i thought yes let's put a video about that out you know we've talked about you know men being vulnerable and how to build vulnerability we've also talked about tools for sustaining um, positive mental health and building a supportive peer group among men we've talked about how to start um, conversations about mental health we've talked about how to reduce stigma all these things are on the blog so please go to the blog subscribe share you know now you know you know you know you know you know so do all the good things there yeah um and i really appreciate the support so far i really appreciate that people are reading it um so far we have about one well, 70 people or so subscribe to the newsletter where we share new information um, about the blog and recommendations for podcasts and books that are quite good for your mental health um if you want to subscribe to that there's a link on the blog as well um so you know the support has been good i can't even believe that at least 40 people read that thing every week <laughs> it's just so hard for me when i ever i go and look at the uh, at the stats so talking about men is something that is new to me because of course i'm a woman and women's mental health has always been the passion for me i've never really thought much about men's mental health um at least until i got married i started living with a man <laughs> and i've seen that the, the impact my mental health has on him his mental health has on me and how that affects our family that affects so many things it affects our friendship community our finances it affects the way we go out in the world our performance at work and it, it is quite a thing that men's mental health is underserved um there are not enough services that you know that attend to that particular um, niche um, and more importantly um, women's mental health has been in the news for many reasons because you know women's mental health affect the way they're able to parent affect the way they're able to engage affect the way society is formed but for all the good reasons women's mental health is important but we have now kind of um, almost put on the back seat now men's mental health and men have higher rates of completed suicide women have higher rates of attempted um, suicide Men also do sometimes more um, physically dangerous jobs and, you know, are at higher risk of quite serious disabilities and um, injuries. And when mental health now comes into play, it also means that they are at higher risk of 
um, having completed suicide, they do attempt it because they, they are basically by nature and the way society has kind of um, encouraged them to be. Um, so thinking about men's mental health, I decided that I'll make a video on fatherhood um, and the role of fatherhood and how fatherhood and mental health intersect. Recently, I took a trip and um, at the airport, I met this very interesting, I, I have notes. <laughs> I met this very interesting young man, handsome by all you know, all standards, you know, wealthy, and he he was there in a professional capacity. So he was an airport staff, and he was just you know talking to me and asking me you know what I did for a living. And I said, oh, I'm a, you know, I'm a psychiatrist. And he said, oh, ah, can I ask you a question? You know, if you could do that, I'm like, oh God, here we go again. <laughs> but you know, I'm always happy to I'm always happy to talk about mental health. I say, yeah, sure, you know, but, you know what's, what's going on? And he says, you know what? Why do men not take care of themselves when it comes to mental health? And, you know, they bear all the responsibilities of the family. You know, they, they have such a vital role to play in society. They are usually providers. They're usually protectors. They're usually doing all the things at once and many things to many people, but nothing to themselves. And I said, hmm, that's an interesting question. What do you think about that? You're a man. Tell me. He said, but I said, well, you're a psychiatrist. You know, that's what I'm asking you. And I said, well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, society has contributed to socializing men to feel this pressure of um, wanting to be everything, um, wanting to be solid structures, wanting to uphold law and order, wanting to be providers, lovers, protectors, um, and just giving and giving and giving and giving and sometimes not getting much back in return in terms of tender love and care and even when that is offered to them sometimes they don't receive it well and you know um, there's this whole idea of manning up you know not showing vulnerabilities which is kind of why we decided to do the series on men this month um, vulnerability is you know a strength you know acknowledging that there are some places where you need support where you're weak where you may not be able to do things means that you get the opportunity to try a different way of doing things, to reach out for help, to be supported, to feel loved, to feel cared for, to feel trusting and confiding relationships. And that is such a strength, you know, having community around you to pull you up. And so asking me this question, he now, you know, disclosed that he had a friend who didn't take a rejection from a love affair very well and unfortunately um, decided to end his life quite tragic uh, that was and how it affected you know him being his friend how that affected the young man's family how that affected even the lady who rejected him and her family and you know the impact of a computer suicide you know the, i think the research says it affects about a hundred people so that includes your you know people's classmates from people who had met them people who they saw at work every day the people they saw at work their families you know the people they um, often maybe took a car ride with the people that they, their neighborhoods, you know, such a wide thing, their children, their children's schools. So for each person that has ended their life by suicide, at least a hundred people will be affected. And so that's what he was trying to say, that so many people were affected by it. And he wants to start taking care of himself better so that he doesn't get to that point where he's now feeling well. And then he had questions about, you know, so when do I need to see a mental health professional? And personally, I feel like, you know, you don't wait, you don't have to see a psychiatrist because that's quite a specialist uh, person to see when you're quite unwell. What you can do is to see a counsellor or a psychologist or somebody who is at least trained to provide some low intensity mental health support. So that person can provide it by way of therapy, that person can provide it by way of self-help resources, that person can provide it by way of um, helping you through a difficult period that you're going through. So if you have a life transition, you have lots of decisions to make you're preparing for a marriage you're getting out of your marriage you have a child that is sick your partner has become sick you yourself are changing jobs things are just a little bit difficult and you're feeling quite stressed having an unbiased opinion unbiased advice unbiased um, professional boundary relationship with somebody who can help you not answer all your questions or help you maybe ask yourself the right question while you're making these decisions can be very very useful um, it helps to reduce the tension on you it takes away the burden of you making a sole decision based on your emotions and you have somebody to that acts as a soundboard for you so my answer to him was that whenever you do feel stress any form of stress is the time to talk to somebody and that person doesn't necessarily have to be your best friend because perhaps your best friend loves you so much that they don't challenge you enough even when you're doing the wrong things and they don't want to hurt your feelings and that is where using professionals come, comes in and even your family sometimes they don't want to hurt you because you know family is for life and you know sometimes telling you the truth they may not say it in the best ways but if you see somebody who is unbiased you know you leave the appointment getting some truths and even though your ego might be hurt you know it is the truth and 
you don't have to sit across them from the dinner table so that's fine yeah um so that was what i told him you know if you're feeling if you're feeling stressed then it's a good time to do it and then incorporating self-care into your daily activities as a as a man generally more even more so as a father you get a lot taken out of you you know if you can find time to incorporate positive self self care things, you know, keeping time in your day for yourself, doing positive things, you know, I always encourage people to have outdoor activities in their daily life, whatever that is for you. If you play football, you do a sport, you do karate, um, you gardening, you do carpentry, you know, something that doesn't have to do with your job and, and most preferably away from screens. I know that some people say that you know they play computer games and that's how they relax, which is good. But we also know that computer games. Um, are one of the things that fall into the category of behavioral addiction quite quickly. They take you away from forming positive confiding relationships, you form quite um, superficial relationships with people that you play games with, you never get to meet them and it takes you away from being present in the moment around you. So as much as that is a recreational thing, um, I think that shouldn't be your main source of relaxation. You should find other ways that you can relax that forces you to be in social settings and you know fills you up in, in, in positive um, positive ways. So having a coffee with an old friend or a new friend or going for a walk or going for a run, those kind of things are encouraged. Some people like to do things with their hands or so woodworking, um, you know, learning a new hobby challenges your brain, builds new pathways in your brain. So those are ways that you can care for yourself. And I always encourage self-care being quite you know a wide range of things rather than just oh let's go for a drink or let's go to the spa or those things are good but you know you can't do that every day in your life so more practically incorporating self-care into your everyday life and i'm using this gentleman as a um, an avatar of some sort to discuss this topic because it, it was quite interesting that while i'm doing a series for men's mental health that a man actually reached out to me to talk about <laughs> what he could do to take care of himself and so these are like the two main things that i talked to him about and i also talked to him about being an example if you're an example of a man that takes care of himself it can it can spread quite quickly because your friends pick that up yeah they may you know jab at you once or twice to say oh yeah yeah you know your phone is off at eight o'clock you don't take calls after eight you know but very soon, his friends and they start doing it as well. You know, they may jump at you to say, "Oh, you have protected family time," or you know, you're going out for coffee or whatever. You're reading a book instead of coming on to play games. You know, it is. You know, you're 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 somebody that is starting something, so you might get jabs here and there. People making fun of you and things like that. But it does spread. It does spread, and good things spread. They do spread. It might be slower, but it does spread. So you're setting an example for your friends. You're also setting, and they will start to see the benefits too in the way you carry yourself, the way you manage situations, how you become more emotionally regulated because you're managing your energy better uh, and your mental health better you're less reactionary you're more responsive to situations you know you can pause and think just because you're taking care of yourself better um and guess what younger men around you also pick that up that becomes their normal your children get used to having a dad that doesn't scream all the time, that isn't just stressed all the time, that is more relaxed, that listens to them, that is present in the moment, that expresses love more freely. What a gift, what a generational wealth to pass on to your children. That is something that money cannot buy. Having a parent that is well regulated, that is calm, that is able to think things through before they make decisions, that makes clear and good decisions. And that is something that Good Mental Health can do for you. Yeah. So you will be an example to people and he, he, he thought about it, he said, oh, what do you mean? I said, yes, there are young men watching you every day, young children watching you every day. You will be known as the uncle or the dad that does that, that good thing. And people will start to use you as a positive example. And so it is worth doing, it's worth being the first in your friendship group. And I'm talking to you, you know, watching this, you know, if a man out there, a young man out there, take care of yourself your personal grooming your personal hygiene you know um you know taking care of your the way you look being the one that you know takes time to moisturize his skin that wears good clothes clean clothes you know being the one that you know switches off their phone when they're having a dinner or lunch bet on yourself bet on yourself doing the right thing you know uh, moving with the crowd pay sometimes but when it comes to mental health you find that no it doesn't it doesn't pay you do what is right for you do what is good for you and um Speaking about fatherhood in particular, um, the socializing of fatherhood is really just about being a protector and a provider, which is quite unfortunate. Um, it's not often taught to young men that they're going to be a role model <laughs> for everything because your children are watching everything, including the way you treat yourself. And when you become a father, unfortunately, or will I even say fortunately now, you don't get the privilege of the nine months of preparing physically and mentally like women do. 
you may get pregnant, their body is changing immediately. They start getting into the consciousness of, I'm going to be a mother. They start conducting themselves differently. So when the baby comes, even though it's quite a change for them, they've had nine months of thinking about it and preparing for it, you know, forcefully because the baby is growing in you and it forces you to change the way you do this. But men, nothing really changes for them throughout the pregnancy. It's in the physical. Um, then all of a sudden, there's this other baby in the house, or there's this baby in the house that demands things from you. Your wife becomes more demanding, or your partner becomes more demanding, and it's such a rude shock. And some people don't take that well, and it does affect their mental health. And I was talking to some women recently who were talking about the experience of having a child and having your partner in the birthing room or in the delivery room, and how that can leave men quite traumatized as well. But then where do they go? Where do you find the help and support that you need to overcome that trauma? Where you see your partner go through one of the most traumatic things that you've ever witnessed in your life. For most men, watching their wife give birth, give birth can be that experience, the most traumatic thing they've ever seen. And how do they come back from that? Who supports them with that? So if you're a man and you've had that kind of experience, you know, go for counseling. If you need further support, the counselor can refer you for that. But I would say, find a safe place to talk about it. Don't just internalize it. It was horrible to watch for you <laughs> for some it was beautiful but for some it was horrible and it, it does affect your relationship with your partner women have said that their husbands have taken ages to start to you know sexually interact with them again just because of that experience and some people say you know husband has said oh my god you're not having another child just because of that you know so obviously they found it quite dramatic and um the impact on on the man too if your wife has suffered a mental health problem after delivery Sometimes the man too also suffers because then the wife is not able to care for the child and he wasn't prepared to be the sole carer of a child. There are men that have had to step up to become the sole carer of a child because maybe their wife were in hospital and the what man is giving a newborn to take home with bottles and he has no idea. And the struggle of that is sleepless night. So there are a lot of ways that fatherhood can change your life. And you know, no matter how you prepare, it can be quite shocking. What I will encourage you to do is to enter it with an open mind, with a learner's disposition to be open to learning, to picking up your phone and Googling, to joining groups, to talking to people, to having a therapist, to seeking advice from people who know better. That is my, that is my, I think is a game changer. To just have that learner disposition. Because we all come with our default setting. Women learn it, men can learn it. So learning how to maintain your mental health in different settings, in the workplace, in your family, you know, as a father, as a husband, as a partner, as a boyfriend, as a son. Some of us unfortunately have come from families where it is our families that are the you know biggest threats to our positive mental health and you know they, they, being a son is such a stressful thing for you. So you have to learn new skills and those new skills come from the self-help, come from therapists, come from counselors, come from people who have gone before you. So um, what can you do? If you find yourself in these situations, these are the things that you can do when you're struggling, when you're stressed. You look out for signs, you know, you know when you're stressed now. Some people have headaches, some people stop sleeping well, some people get really anxious, some people get irritable, they lose their temper. Some people just generally neglect themselves, they forget things like, you know, having showers, they forget that, oh, I can't remember when last I used deodorant, when last I brushed my teeth. Meanwhile, you used to be somebody who used to take care of themselves well. So those are things that we call early warning signs. They are so important. They tell you that something is not going quite well with you. When you notice those things, then you lean into these things I've talked about, community finding hobbies, restarting your hobbies if you've neglected them, things you used to enjoy before, making sure you're sleeping well, eating well, because this body is just one. <laughs> you take care of your physical body, your mental health usually gets better as well, because it takes a lot of mindfulness and presence for you to take care of your physical body. So by extension, your mental health starts to follow. So building confiding relationships can be outside your family, can be with the therapist. You, you, those things are good. And when they do give you advice, they give you things to do, try to do them. It may seem like a bit of a, oh, I'm telling you this devastating thing and you're telling me to go and take a walk every day for 20 minutes. It's so trivial. But guess what? There are little building blocks. You know, there's no single thing that will fix everything that has gone wrong in your life. But a combination of a lot of things will help. So give it a try. When people give you advice on things to do or things to try, try them. Over time, you will start to see a change because you did not get here one day. You didn't get to the point where you're desperate in one day. And my job is really to encourage you not to ever get to that point of desperation again, to build into your life things that already support you, lift you up and make you aware, make you present of where you are at the time in your life. So I hope that you found this quite helpful today. I hope that um, we can continue to do 
more of these kind of talks and videos. If you do have any questions about men's mental health in particular, send me a comment, send me an email, uh, contact details are on there. We're on Instagram as well, Mind of Marcos, that's the name of the blog as well. It's N I N D O F N A K U S. <laughs> so that is on Instagram, that is on Facebook, that is on our uh, email. Um, so till I see you again, take care of yourself. You are supremely loved, you know, you're cared for. And even though you've made mistakes along the way, you've done things wrong. The most important thing you're going to do for you now, from this moment onwards, what is tomorrow going to be like for you? Make a plan, put it into action. Thank you. Bye. <laughs>